processed snack or an apple? I'm sure you know which one is good for you. Yes, today we're talking about processed food, what it is, how it's made, and how it impacts our health. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Marie Azizian, a board-certified general surgeon and IFM-certified functional medicine physician. So processed food is any food that has been altered in some way from its natural state. And this can range from simple washing and chopping to, unfortunately, adding preservatives, artificial artificial flavors and other ingredients to make it more shelf stable, convenient, or palatable. That's a big one. Not all processing is bad, of course, but understanding the degrees of processing can help you make healthier choices. So what is a processed food? Processed foods can be divided into three main categories, minimally processed, moderately processed, and highly or ultra processed foods. So let's explore what these categories mean with examples. So minimally processed foods. Minimally processed foods are the closest to their natural state. The, the processing here is typically for convenience and safety, such as cleaning, cutting, or packaging. Examples are pre-washed and bagged spinach or lettuce, pre fresh cut fruit and vegetable trays, raw nuts and seeds, whole grain rice or oats, milk that has been pasteurized for safety, and uh, freshly ground coffee beans. These foods retain most of their nutrients and minimal processing doesn't significantly alter their health benefits. Now let's move on to moderately processed foods. Moderate processing involves adding ingredients like salt, sugar, or oils to enhance flavor, texture, or preservation. These foods may also be cooked, canned, frozen, or vacuum sealed. Examples include canned vegetables. By the way, please opt for low sodium varieties. Then we have frozen fruits and vegetables without added sugar or sauces, whole grain bread and pasta, yogurt unsweetened or with minimally added sugar, uh, rotisserie chicken if it's not heavily seasoned with preservatives, and canned fish like tuna or salmon packed in water or oil. While moderately processed foods can still be a part of a healthy diet, it's essential to read labels and choose products with fewer added ingredients. The next one are highly processed foods or ultra processed foods. But before we move on, if you're enjoying this video so far, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos on a variety of medical topics in functional medicine latest medical research, skin issues, and other wellness concepts. So, important thing about highly processed foods is that they undergo significant transformation and often contain multiple added ingredients like preservatives, artificial flavors, sweeteners, and unhealthy fats. These foods are typically engineered for convenience and taste, of course, but they lose much of their nutritional value. The examples include, and there are many examples, sugary breakfast cereals, soft drinks and energy drinks, instant noodles or boxed macaroni and cheese, frozen meals like pizzas, burritos and TV din dinners, packaged snacks like chips, cookies and crackers, processed meats uh, like sausages, hot dogs and deli meats, candy bars of, of course on the list, and the list goes on. Highly processed foods are calorie dense, nutrient poor and are linked to major chronic issues such as obesity, diabetes, heart disease, etc. How are processed foods made? Highly processed foods go through several steps before they hit your plate. Refining of these foods involves stripping ingredients like grains of nutrients to make them softer and easier to cook additives like preservatives, flavor enhancers, and artificial colors are added to improve taste and shelf life. Finally, foods are packaged for storage, lasting weeks, months, or even years. These changes make food more convenient, of course, but they also reduce the nutritional value and introduce chemicals that may harm our health over time. I call the processed foods the dead foods. So on that topic, 
One may ask, why are we eating them? Or perhaps the question should be, why are processed foods so addictive? Highly processed foods are often designed to be irresistible. Loaded with sugar, salt, and unhealthy fats, these foods activate the brain's reward centers, making you crave more. So regularly eating these foods can lead to overconsumption, resulting of course in metabolic syndrome, obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and chronic inflammation of the whole body. How does processing occur well, across the spectrum? To illustrate the continuum of processing, here is how different foods change. Well, let's take apples. Whole apple, minimally processed. Then we have sliced pre-packaged apple, that's moderately processed, and then apple flavored fruit snacks, and that's highly, or now you can call them ultra processed food. Another example, potatoes. Fresh potato is minimally processed. Then you have frozen fries with salt and oil, they're moderately processed. And finally, potato chips with preservatives and artificial flavors are highly processed. So let's analyze a protein source like chicken. So fresh, raw chicken breast is an example of minimally processed food. Then we have rotisserie chicken that is moderately processed. And finally, chicken nuggets with fillers and breading, and they are an example of highly unhealthy, highly processed, ultra-processed food. So what can we do? To, we need to make healthier choices, but how? Reducing our reliance on highly processed food doesn't have to be complicated. So let's start with a few tips. Number one, read labels and avoid foods with long ingredient lists or unfamiliar additives. If you can't pronounce the ingredients, most likely they're chemicals, so stay away from them. Number two, shop the perimeter of the grocery store, focusing on fresh whole foods like fruits and vegetables, lean proteins, and whole grains. Number three, cook at home to control what goes into your plate. Number four, choose smart substitutions such as swapping highly processed snacks for minimally processed options like fresh fruit uh, or unsalted nuts. Well, in summary, processed foods unfortunately are everywhere, but understanding what's in them puts you in control. Next time when you're at the store, the grocery store, ask yourself, what am I really eating? Small changes in your diet, like choosing whole foods and reducing highly processed foods, can lead to big improvements in your health by decreasing your whole body inflammation. If you found this helpful, share it with a friend, and don't forget to subscribe for more tips on living your healthiest life. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.